Thank you for joining us on this week's message. We are so honored and excited to be a part of what God is doing through you and in your life. We believe God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And here at DTC, we have a plan to help you discover that purpose and unlock your potential. You can visit us at DTCChurch.com, click on Connect to find ways to help you on your journey. Also, if you've been impacted by this message, you can give on our website or text DTCC to 77977. God bless you and enjoy this message. Well, again, if you are joining us online, we welcome you as well. Uh, one of the things, so we've been, we've been on this 21-day prayer journey, and, and as I was thinking about prayer, uh, I, I, I was reminded of a, of a prayer that I have been praying over my own life uh, for 17 years now. It was about 17 years ago, I was living in Houston, and one of my, my roommate's mother was actually coming into town, and she was going to go, uh, she was coming into town to go see this speaker that was in the city of Houston that night. And she got a couple extra tickets, and so she invited us to go with her. And I had only been walking with the Lord maybe about a year at this point. And, uh, and so I said, sure, you know, let's go. I've never heard of him, but let's go check it out. And so, so we went, and, um, and as the speaker was, what he was talking about is, he was talking about how he had discovered this hidden prayer that was deep within the Bible. And he, as he had begun to pray it over his own life, he had begun to see God do extraordinary things in his life and through his life. And so, as he was talking about it that night, you know, something was happening on the inside of my heart. You see, at that point, I was beginning to believe that, that God had a good plan for my life. I was beginning to believe that God had something greater in store for me. I was beginning to believe that with God, all things are possible. But I still wasn't certain if God could do that in my life. I still used to see, well, maybe he does that for other people, but, but I don't know if he'll do it in my life. But, you know, after listening to that speaker that night, I remember driving back home, and I looked over to my friend, and I, told, I said to him, I said, I will never be the same after tonight. I was smiling from ear to ear, and in my heart, what had happened is that this faith had exploded on the inside of my soul. When I walked out of there, I walked out of there with enthusiasm and this faith that, you know what? God does have a good plan for my life. There is something greater and better that lies ahead for me, and I am going to chase after it. And with whatever, whatever it takes, I am going to go after it. And so, if you ever come across the prayer in the Bible, I encourage you to pray it over your life. Let me move on. I'm playing. Just got to make sure you guys are paying attention. So, so I want to take you to this prayer, and I want to show you that, that God has, has, have, has purposely included it in the Scripture for us. I mean, it, it, it's here by God's design. One of the things I've learned about God, my friends, is that God doesn't just, things in life don't just happen. Think, there, there are no coincidences coincidences in life. You, you don't just happen to run into somebody you were thinking about. You don't just happen to, to run into somebody or make a connection with somebody that helps your life. Things don't just happen. We serve a creator of purpose. God is a God of purpose. He created you on purpose, and he created you for a purpose. He is a God of purpose. And with this particular prayer, God purposely chose to include it in the Bible. I know it's very unique. It's very unique how God did this because it's found in the book of First Chronicles. Now, the book of Chronicles is, is a very boring book in the Bible. If you've ever tried to read through it, it's hard to read through this book because you're reading it and you're like, is this ever going to have a point? Is this going anywhere? And really what, what the book of Chronicles is, it is a, it is a chronology of the, of the history of the descendants of Israel. And so really, it is the family tree of the people of Israel. And it is, a, it is basically just a list of names of the different families. 
For instance, it would be like somebody getting up here and listing all the names of the families of the people that live in the Rio Grande Valley, just over and over and over. Let's read it. And so take a look at First Chronicles chapter 4. Watch this for real. Let me bore you for a little bit. Watch. It says, the descendants of Judah, Perez, Hezron, Carmi, Ur, Shobal, Rea, son of Shobal, was the father of Jehaz, Jehaz, the father of Ahumai, and Lahad. These were the clans of the Zoratites. These were the sons of Etam, Jezreel, Ishma, Idbash. Their sister was, was named Hazaponai. Penuel was the father of Gedor, and Izar, the father of Hosha. There, these were the descendants of Ur, the firstborn of Ephratah, and the father of Bethlehem. Now, if, if you've learned anything from me, it is that when you're reading the Bible, when you're reading difficult names to read, as long as you sound confident when you say it, <laughs> people will believe that that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> and so let me continue with my confidence. Which, by the way, this is the way I preach every Sunday, so I just preach with confidence that I figure you'll believe it. <laughs> Let me go. And so watch, Asher, the father of Tekoa, had two wives, Hala, Nera. Nera bore him Ahuzam, Hefer, Temenai, Hashatari. These were the descendants of Nera, the sons of Hala, Zerah, Sohar, Ithnan, and Koz, who was the father of Anub and Hezobabah and the, the clans of Harhel, son of Harum. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm, so that I, I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. And that keeps going. Caleb, Shuha's brother, was the father of Mehar, who was the father of Eshton. Eshton was the father of Beth Rapha, Pasea, and Tehenai, the father of Ir Nahash. These were the men of Rekha. Now, I read all of that on purpose, not to impress you with my... <laughs> I read all of that on purpose because if you continue to read this book, before it and after it, this is exactly what you see. It is just the list of the names of the families of Israel. But God chose to make a pause when he came to the name of a person named Jabez. When he came to Jabez, God said, I want people to know something about Jabez. And I want them to know that he prayed a particular prayer, and I answered his prayer. And so let's take a look at this prayer. Let's take a look at what Jabez said. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. Now let me pause there really quickly because this is significant. Remember, everything God does, God does with purpose. He didn't just include this prayer in here so it would just be in there and we would just say, oh, that's nice. No, he put it there on purpose. And the specific words that he chose are there on purpose. Which, by the way, let me tell you something about the Bible. For those of you who doubt God or doubt the Bible, then it's authenticity. Let me just tell you something about it. Number one, the Bible was written by over 40 authors, 40 different men orchestrated by God, wrote down the things that God wanted to say. Over, over 40 different men, different cultures, different backgrounds, different languages, over a over 1500 year period and what you find in the bible is the same message from genesis all the way to the book of revelation now that is impossible the only way that that is possible is if god's fingerprint was upon it <clears throat> and so back back to what i'm saying and so God said, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. Now, now over the last couple of weeks, I've been, sharing, I've been talking with you about the, that the way up is down. Well, listen to how, how what God did for Jabez. He said that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. That word honorable, my friends, what does it mean? It means that he was of more higher character. He was a decent man. He was an upright man. He was a humble man. 
I'm telling you, my friends, God loves to do great things through humble people. God loves to do amazing things in the lives of people who live a humble and honorable life toward God. And I believe that's what happened in Jabez's life. And so it goes on. It says, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Now, this is significant as well. Because back in those days, people used to name their children. They would give them a name that meant something about them. It was actually a type of prophecy about the type of person they were going to be. And so when Jabez was born, his mother named him Pain. Now think about that. Imagine the hard time he had with kids at school. But think about this. We don't know why she named him that. We don't know why she named him Pain. It may have been that she had a hard a delivery. It may have been that maybe her husband left her prior to delivery. All we know is that she gave him the name Jabez, and Jabez grew up with this name. Everywhere he went, he could not free himself from this prophecy of pain in his life. Perhaps the way Jabez lived was a life of trouble, of hardship. You ever felt that way? You ever found yourself where it feels like it's just one trouble after another, one hardship after another? You can't seem to move. You can't seem to get ahead. It just seems that there is pain in your story. Well, the good news is, my friends, is that Jabez had a little bit of faith in God. And because he was willing to have some faith and cry out a prayer of faith, God changed Jabez's story of pain. Listen to what Jabez prayed. He says, oh, Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, oh, that you would bless me. What Jabez was doing here, my friends, is he wasn't just saying, God, you know, bless me. He says he cried out to the God of Israel. He cried out to the one who he knew could answer his prayer. And he said, God, bless me. And not just a little bit, bless me a lot. Have you ever asked God to do that for you? Do you ask God to do that for you on a regular basis? Oftentimes, we feel apprehensive to ask God to bless us. We feel that we shouldn't ask him to bless us. But according to this, Jabez said, Lord, bless me. Now, here's the interesting thing. Jabez didn't say specifically. He didn't say, bless me with a new wife. He didn't say, bless me with this or with that. He just said, oh, God of the heavens, Bless me indeed. Let me encourage you, if you don't do this already, to ask God to bless you. And don't be specific. I'm not saying you can't be specific. You can be specific in your prayers. But sometimes you ought to ask God and just say, God, bless me however you want to bless me. You can bless me however you decide. Bless me. And so Jabez prayed, bless me, Lord. And then he said, and enlarge my territory. Now, we don't know a whole lot about Jabez. The Scripture doesn't mention him again. We don't know if if he was a, a farmer. We don't know if he owned some land or he owned a shop at the marketplace. All we know is that Jabez said, Lord, bless me, and then also enlarge my territory. Expand whatever you have given me. What could that mean to you and I here today? What has God given you? What influence has he given you? What business has he given you? What what ability, what talent, what wisdom, what property, what has God given you? I believe you and I can ask God, God, enlarge it, expand it. Whatever wisdom you've given me, give me more. Whatever faith you've given me, give me more. Whatever anointing you've poured on my life, increase it. Enlarge my territory. Now, the next, the next part of Jabez's prayer is so significant as well because I think Jabez understood that if God answered the first two parts of his prayer, he was going to need God's hand in his life. And so he said this, let your hand be with me. It reminds me of what Jesus said once Jesus talked to the disciples and says, guys, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. 
if a branch remains connected to the vine, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And so in essence, Jabez was saying to God, God, when you bless me, let your hand be with me. Let your hand guide me. Let your hand lead me. Help me to stay connected with you so that I know what to do with the increase that you have brought into my life. Now, this is imperative, my friends. How many people do you know that have lost their way because all of a sudden their business began to prosper? And in the process of that happening, they lose their family. They lose themselves. People have lost themselves chasing after careers, chasing after wealth, chasing after that one person that they were looking for. You and I, my friend, need God's hand in our life. Because when God's blesses, you don't want to lose your way. You want to continue to serve God. You want to continue to be faithful to God. You want to continue to do what God has asked you to do. You want God's hand to be with you. Because apart from his hand, you will not be able to handle the increase that God brings into your life. And then he says this, and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. And so Jabez says, and Lord, I've known pain all my life. Keep me away from harm. It reminds me of something that Jesus said once. You've probably heard this. And he said, pray, deliver me, lead me away from temptation, and deliver me from all evil. See, my friends, you want God to keep you free from harm because in essence what you're saying to God is God Keep me from unnecessary pain. Keep me from unnecessary hardship. Keep me from away from temptation that will lead me down the wrong direction. You see, the fact is, my friends, is that oftentimes some of the hardships that we experience in life are not necessarily because of the devil and they're not necessarily because of God. They are because of the choices that we have made in our life. And so you want to pray, God, make, help me make better choices. Help me make wiser choices so that I may be fr free from unnecessary harm and unnecessary pain. <laughs> and so, in, and the scripture says, and God granted his request. And so what I'm saying to you today, my friends, is if you don't pray a prayer like this already, I want to encourage you to pray a prayer like this in your life. I've been praying this prayer over my life 17 years, and I believe it has made a significant difference in my life. See, I believe praying a prayer like this can lead you to step into bigger dreams that God has for you. I believe praying a prayer like this can lead you to walk out God's plan, purpose, and potential for your life. See, I believe this, my friends, because I believe that right now you are sitting in one of those bigger dreams. You say, how so? One day, God gave me a dream that I wasn't looking for. I wasn't asking God for it. And God gave me a dream of reaching people and changing lives here in the Rio Grande Valley. He gave me a dream of reaching thousands of people with the good news of Christ so that they could experience positive life change in their life. And so today, you and I are sitting in that dream. You see, this dream did not begin with a thousand members. It did not begin with three services or two locations. It actually began with two people leaving, leaving the city of Houston, coming back to the valley with a heart full of faith, a heart full of love, and a heart full of passion to see people connect with the Creator and discover their purpose in life. 
That's how this dream began. We started with five people meeting in a living room every single week for Bible studies. And then we, moved, we met in a hotel room with about 20 people. And then, you know, that after five years, the DTC dream only had about 45 members. But do you know what we did at that point, my friends? We said, this is not the dream that you've given us. You've given us a bigger dream. You've given us a greater dream. And so what we did is we didn't settle there. We kept praying. We kept serving. We kept believing. We kept fighting. And we kept giving God our very best because we knew that the dream was bigger than where we were. One thing I can tell you about dreams, my friends, is that they don't come easy. You have to fight for the dream. You have to fight for it. See, I believe that, that we are here today because God gave the dream, but we've had to fight for that dream to come to reality. And one thing I've learned is that God never said it was going to be easy. He said it was going to be good. And that's what God has said about your life. He didn't say your life was going to be easy. He said it was going to be good. He didn't say that everything was going to always go smoothly. He didn't say that the journey to his plan for your life was just going to be one high and one victory after another. No, he said it was going to be good. But it's going to be hard on the way. And sometimes I think we think that life is supposed to be easy. Can I tell you something? In the 15 years that I have led this church and my wife and I have, have led its direction, it has not been easy at all. Matter of fact, it has been downright hard most of the time. But we keep on fighting and you keep on believing and you keep on dreaming and you keep on doing. Why? Because it's worth fighting for. And so I don't know what dream God has placed in your life. I don't know what God is stirring up in your heart, but I believe, my friends, that God wants to take you there. See, the Bible says in, in Jeremiah chapter 29, 11, that God's plans for you are good, not to harm you, but to give you future and a good hope. That is his plans. That means that is a, that is a projection, that is a picture of what God has in store for you tomorrow. Wherever you are today, even if you're in a season of pain like Jabez, God has something greater in store for you tomorrow. But I believe just like Jabez, it begins with a little bit of faith. Just like DTC Church, you gotta, you gotta fight for it. You gotta fight for the dreams that God has placed in your heart. See, I believe that God gives us dreams because I believe that God sees the potential in us and he gives us a dream so that he can draw out the potential that he has already put on the inside of us. But it doesn't come easy. You have to fight for it. And so if you have a dream in your heart for your family, for your business, for an idea, my encouragement for you is keep on praying, keep on believing, keep on serving, keep on giving God your very best where you are today. Don't wait to get to where you're going to get. Start giving God your very best right now. See, one thing I've learned is that faithfulness in the kingdom represents movement even when you don't see anything moving. As long as you're being faithful to God, there is, a, there is a work that is being done behind the scenes, and in no time you're going to see the results of your faithfulness. But this is where I often see people give up, is they're being faithful for a little bit, and nothing happens. And so they throw in the towel. But my friends, the Bible calls us to be the kind of people that persevere, the kind of people that, that, that don't quit easily. The kind of people that Scripture says that we're not the kind that shrinks back. We're the kind that stand up and step up and fight the good fight of faith. That's who we are. I think about what you're a part of today. 
Today you are sitting in a dream. You and I are sitting in what began only as a dream. If the dream had never been pursued, this would not exist. As a church, we know that the dream is not complete. Because although we have reached thousands of people so far, there are still countless thousands of more people to reach here in the Rio Grande Valley. And so that means that we're not finished. Because as a church, we are here to help lost people get found. We are here to help people who only know about God get to know God. We are here to help hurt people get healed. We are here to help broken relationships get restored. We are here to build people up and not tear them down. As a church, we are here to help people discover their purpose and their full potential in life. We are here to tell people that there is more. There is more in you. There is more to life. And there is more that God has in store. We are here to help people find freedom from their past so they can pursue something greater in their future. We are here to help young people and old people find their way back to God. We are here, my friends, to help people find, follow, and finish God's plan for their life. We are here to help change people's eternal destiny and their current reality. I believe that DTC Church, my friends, is a place where you can belong and where you can become everything that God has created you to be. And this is why we can't stop what we're doing. And this is why we moved into this location a year ago. It was to expand the territory. It was to, to give more people an opportunity to have an encounter with the living God so that they can begin to live out their destiny, so they can begin to live out God's greater plan for their life. Jesus said that he came to seek and to save the lost that he came to give people freedom, to give people life. Jesus said that, that he wants nobody to perish, but everyone to come to a full relationship with God. And I believe that's why we are here. I believe that's why this dream exists. I believe that's why God gave the dream to DTC, because he saw the Rio Grande Valley, and he saw a people. He saw people like you and people like me. He saw people like your family members and your loved ones and your coworkers and your friends. And he said, they need to know me. They don't know me. I have something greater for them. They're in the midst of some pain, but they need to know there's something better that lies ahead. I want to give them that hope. I want to give them that strength so they can persevere through this trial because there's still greater things that lie ahead. And so I want to encourage you. I've been sharing with you that as a church, you know, our, our passion is reaching people and changing lives. Not just a thousand people, but thousands more people in the Rio Grande Valley. Why? Because there are more to be reached. There are more people that need to know God, and you and I could do something about it. I've been sharing with you how we're in the midst of a, pursuing a big project. We're in the midst of pursuing a bigger dream. There's a location that we have a contract on right now where we can build a facility that will help us to reach thousands of more people so they can experience positive life change through a relationship with Christ. And I believe you and I can do something about that. You and I can be those world changers that God has called us to be. One day you and I, one day you and I will step into eternity and someone's life was changed because of DTC Church. And they're going to say to you, thank you. Thank you for serving DTC. Thank you for giving to DTC. Because of you, there was a seat just for me so that I could meet my Savior and so that I could pursue my destiny. And so what do I want to encourage us to keep doing? To keep serving, to keep giving, to keep praying, to keep believing, and all of us together to keep giving God our very best 
because there's still more work to be done. The dream is bigger than where we are today. How many of you guys are with me? Do you believe that? And so let me pray for us. Father, we give you thanks. Thank you, Lord God, that you're the biggest dreamer of all. And thank you, Lord, that you give us dreams that are bigger than ourselves, dreams to pursue, dreams to chase after. Thank you, Lord God, for the dream that you've given DTC. Help us to continue to give ourselves to it, each one of us doing our part, so that one day our efforts here on earth, our faithfulness here on earth can echo in eternity. And Father, thank you for the prayer of Jabez. Thank you for including it in the scripture. And I pray over all of us here today, as Jabez prayed, we cry out to you, God. Oh, that you would bless us, Lord, and enlarge our territory. Let your hand be with us and keep us from harm so that we may be free from pain. I pray this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. Now, church, you know we don't like to close without giving everyone that opportunity to find faith with God, to find forgiveness for their sins, for their past, to change your eternal destiny and your current reality right now in one moment. One moment of faith will change your eternal destiny. One moment of faith will change your current reality and set you on a course for something greater that lies ahead. And that moment of faith, my friends, is coming to Christ and saying, Jesus, I need you. I need to be forgiven. I need you to save me. I cannot do it on my own. I need you. Can we do that right now? Right where you're at, just close your eyes and bow your heads with me. If you're watching online, you can tune in as well. You can join in as well. Let's just, if you're here today and you want to receive God's forgiveness for your sins, you want to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord of your life. Right where you're at, as a sign of faith to God, we lift up your hand to him. All across the room, all across the room, all across. God bless you, God bless you. God bless you, God sees you, God sees you. God sees you, God sees you. You can put your hand down. Now let's all pray this prayer of faith together. Say, Lord God, I know that through Jesus, I'm forgiven of my sins. So Jesus, today, I receive you as my Savior and as my Lord. Today, I give my life to you. Now help me to follow you to greater things. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, church, give God a good hand clap.